My next guest is one of the premier authors and investigative journalists in America today. He's a former reporter for the LA Times. He's been awarded for his coverage of Latin America and his eye-opening reporting on the Mexican drug cartels and their effect upon America and our border. He's here to discuss the madness of opioids in our nation. Please welcome the author of the book Dreamland, the true tale of America's opiate epidemic, Mr. Sam Cuyones. Sam, I'm so happy to have you here. Very Thank nice you. to be here. How you guys doing? <laughs> Great to be here. Thanks for having me on. Well, it's, it's a pleasure and honor, and I wanted to have you. I've read this book, and I'm telling you, this is a compelling book. I wish every American, and I hope every American will read it. Thanks very much. The Dreamland is Portsmouth, Ohio, a swimming pool. Right. And you start the book there, but this is a book that covers how this opioid crisis mm -hmm. has touched all of our communities. Yeah, and I think Dreamland is, is the pool. There was this gorgeous pool in this little town called Portsmouth. But, but Dreamland was kind of a stand-in for what's happened across the country where we destroyed the things that brought us together. You know, the pool was this place where everybody came together, knew each other, kids grew up at the pool. People kind of watched each other. There was this kind of self-regulating behavior there. And uh, in time, they lost, their, they lost the steel plant, they lost Main Street. In time, they also lost Dreamland Pool. And I think, my way of thinking was that this, this pool was really kind of what we have done to community in this country. We have destroyed what brings us together. We have ignored it sometimes. We've not funded it. We've built very isolating, sad, you know, suburbs. We call that prosperity. And so to me, the idea of the pool was really kind of the way of saying this is what has led, in a sense, to, to this vast opioid crisis because we, we have destroyed what brought us together. And these drugs are the most isolating drugs that we know as a, as a, as a, as a human race. And what you do in this book is, is you tie all of these things together from what's happening in Mexico and where the drugs right. come from, but how they were originally prescribed by doctors to help people, and then when the prescriptions ran out, they went and got street drugs. Right. And this is not, we're not talking about um, street people. We're talking about the most sure. educated, These are folks people. who got addicted to, to painkillers because they went to the doctor with uh, a car accident problem or a shoulder separation, athletic injury. Football is now a gateway to heroin addiction in this country. You know, because of this, and these these pills contain drugs that are from the opium poppy, and they're they're chemical cousins, you might say, to heroin. When you run out of them, you're you're and, and you're addicted. You look for something that's that's cheaper, just as potent and, and cheaper. And now, of course, uh, our heroin comes from Mexico. It's very cheap to get here, and and that is that is the kind of this storm that that kind of uh, this this weather. <laughs> It kind of moves together, collides with each other, both the pills, the heroin together. And this is what we're seeing now all across the country. It starts in, you know, Appalachia. And of course, if there's one area that as a country we're used to ignoring, it's Appalachia. And had we not ignored it, had we paid attention 10, 15 years ago, we might not be in this situation. We did. Uh, it's spread. And now, of course, it's really all across the country. You know, it's, it's an amazing thing. Sam, one thing that I just find it really troubling is that there's a lot of political uh, issue in this. Politicians sure. have carefully protected the pharmaceutical industry. There was a big report on 60 Minutes last sure. week that has rocked the industry and Absolutely. has rocked Congress. Sure. It cost the designated uh, drug czar his job, exactly. Tom Reno from Pennsylvania. Th this is resonating to the highest halls and, of Congress. And I think one, one, what this is showing is that we have really ignored that power of the pharmaceutical companies for a long time. You know, this has been percolating. This is not something new. We just, we're paying attention to it in the last, what, two years, two plus years. Uh, this has been going on for 20 years. And I think part of that, is, part of what shows how powerful the pharmaceutical industry is in this, country, in this country are the ads that we see on TV constantly for these drugs. You can't even pronounce them sometimes. No other country in the world does that. We allow that. I'm not sure why. Um, one thing it does show to me is that we have w w this, this, th those ads, as well as this story here about opioids and so on, show the power uh, of, that, of, that, of that lobby, that they could, with marketing, uh, very aggressively attack doctors and say, docs, we have an epidemic of pain in this country. We now know, we now know that these pills, these narcotic painkillers, are virtually non-addictive when used to treat pain. Therefore, it doesn't really matter how many of them you prescribe. So go to it, and, and really, 
In the long run, I tell you, marketing worked. The, 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 it was very heavy marketing put to bear, and, and, and it worked. And, and now you go into, for a, a minor, a routine surgery, the pain's gonna last you three days. I, I'm sure many people in the audience have done this. So they've gone in, they get 30 days worth of pills, probably then another refill if they want one, another we refill after that. And by then they're hooked. And, and, and also, but also, what else frequently happens as well, even if they don't get hooked, a lot of those pills leak out into the black market. We have an enormous new uh, black market in prescription pain pills for the last 20 years. How do we stop this epidemic? And that's what it is, it's an epidemic. Yeah, oh, it's certainly an epidemic. We're gonna lose, we'll have lost last year, I think more people than, than all Americans who died in Vietnam War in 2016. It's an amazing thing to be able to say. Um, here's the thing, uh, I believe that there is no solution. You know, I no believe, magic bullet. No, there is no solution. There are many solutions. We have gotten away from community in this country. We have, uh, we have destroyed a lot that, that brought us uh, 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 together. We got into this because we, we had a problem, we thought, and that was the mystery of human pain. How do you deal with that? Pills for everybody. Well, now we can see what that leads to. So my feeling is there's really not a solution. There is a community of solutions, a mosaic. We have it in every county. Great talent. We have great energy. The problem is they work like this. We, we're so siloed up that we, you know, we don't, they don't work like, like that, you know? And to me, that is really kind of, to me it became, this book became, I thought I was writing the great American drug trafficking hmm. story, you know? And it, it really became a book about who we'd become as Americans. That what you're talking about, pain, right. fear of pain, not just, not just physical pain, Emotional pain, all kinds of pain we want to avoid, you know. And to me, this is really a story of who we become a as a country. And the antidote to that is community. Well, Sam, I want to tell you, this book is compelling. It it's not a book. Some people may say, well, you know, that's, that's interesting. But I don't know if that book is for me. This book is so brilliantly and Thank you. powerfully written. Thank you very and much. And the stories are compelling. And you tell it with such human drama that I think you've done this country a great service. I oh, hope every really, American so reads much. this because most all of us are experiencing some connection oh, to yeah. this crisis. All across the country. And I just want to say, Sam Canonius, you have written a book. It's absolutely and positively riveting. The book is called Dreamland, The True Tale of America's Opiate Epidemic. It is a must read. You can order it from your favorite online booksellers. You can also read more of Sam's award-winning reporting at samcanonius.com. And I hope, I seriously mean this, I hope you will read it.